Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight at 6. I'm Sarah Horbakowitz here with Corrales Ortiz. We've seen so much heat over the last few weeks that this weekend has felt like such a nice break. Yeah, these last couple of days because of the cloud cover and the rain, it's actually helped us cool down a bit. So it's been a nice change in the pattern and we're getting some much needed rain. Yes, I'm yes. not normally a rain person, but I've even been loving this. <laughs> yeah, so it started off in northern Arkansas, became widespread throughout the day. Now it's shifted further to our south. Some of this rain has been heavy at times. We have seen some flash flood, uh, uh, even alerts once in a while and some strong storms. Nothing severe at the moment, but you can see that some of these uh, showers have produced heavy periods of rain, especially over in northwest Arkansas from Madison to Newton County. We saw a stretch from seven to eight inches of rain within the span of 24 hours, even in pockets of Stone, Van Buren and Cleburne County, not including the several inches that we saw in northern Arkansas over the past 24 to 48 hours prior to this. So much so the heavy rainfall has actually produced a, a wave of heavy rainfall to kind of steam up uh, along the Buffalo River and in kind of increased the levels in some of the areas uh, in Ponca. Some of that rain was near flood stage and it kind of continued downstream. So Pruitt, there is a uh, flood stage levels now because of that heavy rainfall. Uh, so we went from very dry conditions to quite a bit of rain uh, in a short period of time. As we go into the overnight hours for us here in Little Rock, it's going to be quiet. We'll be seeing some scattered chances for showers and storms in the overnight hours, but we still do have more rain to talk about in the forecast. So I'll be talking about that coming up in minutes. All right, thanks, Corrales. Now, while it's pretty mild here, severe weather is continuing around the country, and at least 25 people are now dead after flash floods left parts of Kentucky underwater this week. Many are now still missing, and the governor there says that the death toll is likely to keep rising. Michael George reports from New York. It's a race against the clock in storm ravaged Kentucky. This is still an emergency situation. We are in search and, and rescue mode. Emergency workers are scrambling to locate victims and survivors of the flash floods that tore through the state this week. This hit the entirety of the county. From one end to the other, it hit everything. The storm knocked out internet and cell phone service for many, and entire buildings were ripped off their foundations and carried away by the water. People's lost their homes, uh, can't get to their jobs. I mean. It's, it's devastating. This is probably the worst devastating I've ever seen. Thousands are still without power, and several communities don't have running water. And now they're bracing for even more wet weather Sunday. Make sure you are in a safe place. I don't want to lose one more person. Uh, we care about you. It's not fair that it's going to rain again, but it is. Kentucky officials say restoring electricity is a priority before a wave of high heat settles in over the region next week. Michael George, CBS News, New York. In a span of 48 hours between Wednesday and Friday, up to 10 and a half inches of rain fell in parts of eastern Kentucky. Most of the area's rivers weren't expected to hit their highest level until today. And in a story just in the THV 11 newsroom, two people were found dead in Beadville after firemen put out a house fire. Arkansas State Police tell us that Kathy Holloway and Dwayne Woolbright were found dead in a home just south of Newport shortly after 8.30 p.m. While they were found after a house fire, the cause of death is still unknown. State criminal investigators were called to the scene by the Jackson County Sheriff's Department to take over the investigation. Authorities are also working to find the cause of the fire, so we'll provide updates on this story as soon as we have them here on THV 11 and on our website, THV11.com. Today, RDOT has confirmed that longtime Arkansas Highway Commissioner and Springdale icon Bobby Hopper has passed away. If you remember, Hopper is responsible for the idea of creating what is now called the Bobby Hopper Tunnel, which has played a major role in making Northwest Arkansas what it is today. In a statement, RDOT Director Lori Tudor said in part, quote, while we have lost a great friend, a wonderful person, and a dedicated servant of the people, he and his legacy will never be forgotten. 
And moving on to a topic a lot of you have been talking about all week. We finally have a winner, but sadly it's not me that's winning. The ticket for the second largest Mega Millions jackpot in lottery history was sold in Illinois. That's according to the Illinois Lottery website. The winning numbers in last night's drawing were 67, 45, 57, 36, and 13, with the Mega Ball 14 and Mega Plier times two. The lucky jackpot winner hasn't come forward yet, but when they do, they'll have a few options. The winner can choose to take an installment payment or a $747 million lump sum option, which comes out to $523 million after taxes. So not quite the billion, but still a big chunk of cash. And the actual store where the winning ticket was sold will also receive a cash bonus of $500,000. At the White House, President Joe Biden has tested positive for COVID-19 again. That's just days after he recovered from his previous case of the virus. The White House physician said in a statement earlier today, and the president says that he's not experiencing any symptoms. In a tweet, the president said that he's still at work, but isolating for the safety of everyone around him. The president, who is vaccinated and double boosted, feels, quote, quite well, and his physician, Colonel Kevin O'Connor said that he will not begin any sort of treatment at this time. Biden was first treated with Paxlovid when he first tested positive nine days ago. The president is experiencing what O'Connor called a rebound positivity, which can happen to a small percentage of patients who are treated with that specific Paxlovid drug. Meanwhile, the Biden administration is buying 171 million doses of COVID boosters to specifically fight the spread of Omicron subvariants. The current vaccine was designed to work against the original strain of COVID. It still dramatically reduces your risk of hospitalizations and death, but the effectiveness has slightly waned with each mutation. BA.5 accounts for most of the new daily cases in the country, with nearly 88% of Americans living in a county with a medium or high COVID risk level. The Biden administration is holding off on rolling out second boosters for everyone until everyone under 50 until September. And a new poll shows that 43% of parents will not vaccinate their child under five against COVID-19. The Kaiser Family Foundation survey finds that 27% of parents plan to wait and see before vaccinating their young children, with most citing fear of side effects as their main reason. More than 450 young children nationwide have so far died from the COVID virus. Back here in the capital city, it was an eventful day as duck hunting enthusiasts from around the country continued their takeover of downtown Little Rock. The Delta Duck Hunters Expo continues today at the State House Convention Center, and the activities there included seminars on duck habitat conservation, hunting strategy contests, shopping, and more. If you missed out, though, the expo is still going on tomorrow. It'll be open all day until 4 p.m. Also happening today, dozens of kids, teens, and adults gathered in North Little Rock for the 18th Mid-South Summit Black Expo. The event featured more than 100 vendors and a health unit for people to get free health exams like mammograms and colon screenings. Organizers say the expo focuses on health education and also giving minority-owned businesses an opportunity to showcase themselves. The importance of providing community resources is simply because there's a lack thereof. And so when we have a community that's trying to build, trying to develop, um, we have to think of, of different aspects. And there were some definitely notable guests there. Former Razorback and NBA champion Bobby Portis served as a panelist earlier and shared his story with the audience of how he sacrificed and didn't give up his dreams. Still ahead, there's a popular social media story that's claiming the United States boasts the clearest lake in the world. Well, our National Verify team investigates that when we return in just a few minutes. A live look over the metro this evening. We are quiet and we are cloudy. We still have some rain in the forecast to talk about. I'll have the details on that just ahead. <laughs> 